Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of our Minecraft Guild Rock Survival Series. My name is Joe Buffalo and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I built this super smelter behind me using furnaces, blast furnaces, and smokers. It also has a shulker unloading system, and when it's not in use, every single hopper is shut off by the flip of one switch. We're also going to take a quick look at all 31 plus farms that I've built, and somewhere along this video, we're going to go ahead and prank someone. We have a whole bunch of excitement ahead, so let's go. To begin this build, I cleared out an area behind this wall, which is about 30 blocks by 30 blocks. And the way that I'm going to build this farm is to have a horseshoe type build, where there will be furnaces on the left and blast furnaces in the back wall. And then on the right side over here, we're going to have our smokers. And I'm going to run 27 of each on each wall, because that's how many lavas fit in one shulker box. So building an automatic smelter is fairly easy. We could go ahead and place down a hopper. And on top of that hopper, we can place any type of furnace. And in the back of that furnace, we can place a hopper going into the furnace. Then going into the furnace from above, you can place another hopper. And how this works is very simple. The hopper on the bottom collects everything that is smelted or left behind from smelting. For example, when we use a lava bucket, the bucket will go into the hopper below once it's emptied. And then the hopper on top will be anything that we decide to cook or smelt. Now the hopper on the back will be the point of entry for the fuel. So one of the easiest ways to make it automatic is to run a rail system on the back and the top hopper. Once the rail system is installed, then you can place a hopper with chest to ride back and forth across the hoppers. Each minecart with chest would then load in either fuel if it was in the back hopper or the food or smelting item if it was on the top hopper. By attaching a chest to the bottom hopper, you can easily set up a simple collection system. So in addition to my build, I want to lock every hopper when this system is not in use. And in order to do that, I'm going to need a redstone block. And if I go ahead and place a redstone block here, you can see that, that the hopper in the back is locked. And when we remove the furnace, you also see that the hopper from below is locked. Now with both of these hoppers locked, all we have to do is figure out how to lock the top hopper. In order to do that, we need a redstone block in this position. So what we'll need is some redstone dust, sticky pistons, a lever, and probably some repeaters in order to get a redstone circuit off of one switch for the entire build. So as I'm building this, the goal is to get every single hopper I use locked when this is not in use. So we're gonna take that exact build over here to the left, place down a temporary block and stick a hopper into that temporary block. And then again, just put a hopper into the back of the furnace and a hopper in the top of the furnace. Now what I'm going to do is run a line of hoppers all the way down to about here. I want them all facing to the right so that I have a collection area back on the wall that's behind us. Now we're going to go ahead and put the furnaces on the top all the way down. And then after we have the furnaces, we can put the hoppers into the back the entire way down. And we can go ahead and put the hoppers in the top of the furnace all the way down. Once that's complete, I'm going to head back to the beginning of the build and put down a lever with some redstone dust coming out of that lever. And then right behind the hoppers and furnace, I'm going to dig down two blocks the entire way down two wide. And then once that's complete, I'm going to go ahead and stick a sticky piston in the front block here the entire way down. Now I can go ahead and put redstone blocks on top of the sticky pistons. And once the redstone is connected, you can see that the sticky piston activates and raises that redstone block to the top. Now what we need to do is connect the rest of all these pistons through this second trench that I dug out. Right here in this section that I've cleared out is where the redstone power has ran out from the lever. Here we're going to need a repeater going into the piston at the last place where the redstone has power from the lever. They're going to head take this corner piece of redstone out, put a repeater here with redstone connecting the other repeater and the rest of the redstone. Now that powers everything up another 15 blocks for us. And here's where the power runs out in the second section. We're going to set up the same circuit we set up just a few seconds ago to power the remaining redstone blocks to shut off the remaining hoppers. Now we're going to go back to where our lever is, and we're going to dig out these two blocks here. And then we're going to run redstone and a redstone torch on top of that block. Now that's going to power the piston on the top hopper so that the top hopper can get locked by the redstone block. And all I'm going to do is run a redstone torch tower that is three blocks high to reach the piston so that it can extend down and lock the hopper. Now once we get in front of the hopper, go ahead and place your sticky piston looking down with a redstone block attached to the sticky piston. And then just connect the redstone dust to the piston and it'll extend and lock the hopper.
Now all I have to do is run a row of pistons across the front of this, and then connect the redstone until the redstone runs out of power, at around 15 blocks from the redstone torch, and then just fill in with redstone blocks the entire way. Now here's the area that we ran out of power from the redstone dust. It's the same setup as the beginning. Just build a redstone torch tower and continue to do this process until everything is powered. Now that everything is powered, I can go ahead and put the rails down. I'm going to use powered rails across the entire back row of hoppers. And then when you come down below, if you're not facing the right direction, the rails will do this and connect the incorrect way. All you have to do is extend it a little further on the bottom rail here, and then you can see they connect correctly. Once all the powered rails are put in place, we can put redstone blocks on top of the powered rails. That'll power all the rails for the entire section. Now I want to dig out the track area so that we can have a central location to put our shulker box unloading system. I'm going to place the shulker unloading area about 13 blocks away from the back wall. And I'm going to dig right down to the base of the pistons all the way down to the end so that we can take that back row and connect it to the front area. Now don't get tricked because these power rails are on. They're on because the redstone dust is activated. So it is necessary to put levers in. Then one thing to do is to make sure at the beginning and the end where the mine carts are going to bounce back and forth, make sure there's a powered rail against a block. And right before the powered rail, there's a regular rail. As you can see on both sides, we do that so that the mine carts can bounce back and forth without any interruption. Now we can go ahead and test it, see if it works. And it's smooth all the way down, bounces back. And that would be the fuel minecart or the furnaces. Now there I forgot to shut it off and you can see it'll go on and on until I shut that main power off. Now I'm going to connect the second row of hoppers, which is the smelting hoppers, to a second minecart with chest. Now that that's complete, it is in the same process as we did the last one. Except I just came over here and made a little slope at the very end of it. And if we go the whole way down, and I set it up the same way as I did before with the one block with a powered rail and a non-powered rail next to it. So that it could go back and forth whenever necessary. Now let's go ahead and test this out. And both carts go the full way down and return the full way back. Shutting the power off will let the cart sit and stop and fill up. Next, I built the shulker unloading system. And if you want to know how to build this shulker unloading system, you can watch my YouTube shorts. There's a short on how to build this exact shulker unloading system. So the difference between this and the YouTube short is that I'm locking the hoppers. And, to, and in order for me to lock the hoppers, I just ran some redstone dust into a sticky piston with a redstone block attached. That block extends down to redstone dust on top of the hoppers, which then turns off all the hoppers as well as the two hoppers up top as it is next to them. All right, now I'm going to head over to Twitch and I'm going to live stream the other two sides of this smelting area. And we'll see it when we get back. All right, now we're back and I decided to also add in a detector rail for the smelting side of each of the furnaces. And what the detector rail does is it detects if there's items inside the minecart with chest by using a comparator off of the detector rail. So it compares if there's anything in it, which shoots power into the repeater, which then powers the redstone and then goes into that repeater, which powers that block to keep the powered rail on. But what I also did was shut it off if I want to reload the minecart with chest. So if I want to reload the minecart, all I have to do is flick the lever and the lever shuts off the repeater. If there is a repeater going into a repeater from the side, it'll shut off the repeater that's getting the current power. And by overriding this, it will not turn on the power rail. Therefore, the minecart will stop and not go back and keep unloading until it's empty. And that bar across the repeater is what shows you that it's locked. Now I want to go ahead and test it out. So I'm going to put a shulker of lava in one side and a shulker of stone in the other. One thing to make sure you do is before you push the buttons to remove the redstone underneath the droppers, otherwise the shulker system will not work. Once it's complete, that piston will hit the shulker box and then the hopper will pick up the shulker box and place it into the chest for us. And now we can go ahead and send the fuel off. And that's going to put lava in every single furnace. Now here we have one furnace that had some stones in it that I actually was testing. So it was working, but that's why it turned on. So it won't damage anything. I got it out of there before it smelted it.
Now our minecart with chest is completely full with stone. Joker's been returned to the chest. And we're going to go ahead and send that off its merry way. We're going to leave the detecting area off. So that it can completely unload its entire chest into the furnace. So when this is complete, I will have an entire choker full of smooth stone. And there's a good sign all of our furnaces have turned on. And now I went ahead and placed the collection area over on this wall. And on this wall, it's also against hoppers that are locked when the system is on. And there's our buckets along with the beginning of our smooth stone, which an entire shulker box full of smooth stone will fill up this chest. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide all this redstone with some bricks and iron bars. And I'm going to head over to Twitch to complete that part of this build. I'll see you when I get back. Okay, so I am back from Twitch. However, we are not in the automatic super smelter area, are we? No, we are over at Lockley's base. And the reason we're at Lockley's base is because I'm about to play a prank on him. And the reason I'm showing you this is because if you haven't seen the Twitch episode, Lockley decided to come over and get me back for what I'm about to do. As I was live streaming and placing blocks on the other side of the room, he decided to start flipping the switch on and off power the redstone blocks, which made me think I was breaking something as I was removing and placing blocks throughout the build. I then realized it was him, saw him around the corner, moved on. Cute little prank, I thought. However, he then built a redstone clock, attached it to the lever of the on-off switch for the automatic smelter, and then turned it on. <laughs> well, that created over 200 pistons to fire on and off, which if you haven't done that or seen that before, especially on a server, while you're streaming, it causes an incredible amount of lag. Not to mention the sound is completely ridiculous. It was pretty neat how it worked, and I think he got stuck in the wall a few times. But overall, that was a great time, and I'm glad he was a part of it, especially on the live stream. But here's what I did to get the pranks done on me started. So I finally located him. He was way up in one of the buildings. I really didn't want him to see my name. So I'm trying to crouch so he doesn't see me. And I have snowballs with me. So the trajectory on these snowballs are very off. As you can see where my cursor's at versus where it's landing. I didn't realize how far away he was. But I thought he saw a few right there. Then I realized maybe I should go stand up on one of these stairs. So I go up on one of the stairs. I get a little closer. And right about here, the money shot. Knocks him down. I'm crouched. He doesn't see me. If you look in my right hand corner, I also have the invisibility potion. So he doesn't see me at all. I'm not holding anything in my hands. So after a few minutes, he's back on the back wall. My invisibility potion decides to start to wear off. I begin to panic. So I go into my menu, put all my armor and gear back on, grab my snowballs, and as I'm doing that, he sees me because I'm not crouched anymore. And hits me with the fire arrow. So now this turns into a superhero fight. In a few minutes here, you'll see. I get down, land, look around. Trying to find out where he's at. I know he sees me because he has the upper advantage. I decided to put my totem back in my hand because I know this can turn ugly quick. Especially with my 81 levels. So I go to text him to tell him hi, it was me. And all of a sudden I get hit with another flying arrow of fire. And now this is where it turns into a superhero fight. Which gave me a great idea. Once he finishes this city, we really need to have a superhero fight. I think it would be fun. Especially flying around and through these buildings. There's a couple close encounters. But that was a lot of fun and I know there's going to be a lot more pranks in the future. So if you enjoyed this portion of the video, go ahead and head back to Lockley's channel. I'm going to post it up top. You'll get quite a laugh at all the additional pranks that he's played on the entire Guild Rock. Thanks Lockley, but just an FYI, this is not over. Let's go. Okay, back at the base. We're gonna go through the 31 farms really quick. You're already familiar with the iron farm. And here's our honey slash honeycomb slash wheat farm. And right away we run into another sugar farm. And here's our crimson and warped forest farm. Over here's our clay farm. 
You can see our cactus farm in the back. Here's a glow lichen farm. Here's our mud farm. Over here is our pumpkin and melon farm. Now, if you want to learn how to build these farms, 90% of them are on my YouTube shorts. So go check out my YouTube shorts to learn how to build these farms. Here's my scute farm or turtle farm. Here's my little cocoa bean farm. Here's a really cool farm back here. This is a music disc farm. And I'll show you how this works really quick. We turn on the lights so there's absolutely no mobs in here right at the moment. So you trap a skeleton in the first pod, hitting the lever, and the block comes down on its head. And then in this chamber, you go ahead and catch yourself a creeper. And when a skeleton kills a creeper, you get a music disc. So let me show you all the music discs I have. And here's all the music discs I have. This is my snowball farm. And this is the goat farm. And not only does it breed goats, but it also gets goat horns. And the goats simply attack the armor stands. And when the goat hits the tripwire, the armor stand moves to the left and the goat's horn hits the wood behind the armor stand, causing it to fall off its head. And then up here is the goat breeder where we just feed the goat some wheat. And then once you fed them their wheat, you go back inside and all the baby goats come through the little gap at the bottom. Now they'll grow up to be adult goats, which will cover the horns. And that's how we get so many horns. Over here is my sheep farm. I have one of each of the colors and an allay attached to each of the sheep. Each allay will hold one stack of that color. And as you just run through here, you collect all the colors and put them away. Over here is my cow breeding farm. Also leather and steak. It's the same process as the goat farm. You feed them with wheat up top. The babies produce on the bottom. When they grow up, you hit the lever. The lever shoots out a bucket of lava. The adult cows produce cooked beef and leather. And then my other couple farms are up here on top of the mountain. These are my ice farm and my powdered snow farm. And the way to get to powdered snow is grab a few buckets and then just take the powdered snow out of the cauldrons. And then to get the ice, you just take a pickaxe with silk touch and mine out the ice. And then I get you an ice block, which you can turn into packed ice and then you can turn that into blue ice. So that is all of my farms for now. I'm sure I'll find a few more along the way to make, but let's head back and check out the finished automatic smelting room. Here's the completed project of our automatic super smelter that uses the furnaces, the blast furnaces, and the smoker. All the flooring is completed, all the brick is put in, iron bars are in place, all the lighting is done. I switched out the blocks on the shulker unloading system to give it more of an industrial look. And then over here in the corners, I placed trap doors to get back inside behind the rails and behind all the redstone, just in case something breaks. And I put trap doors in all of the three corners in order to get on each side of the build. Well, that wraps up this video. Let's say goodbye. Today's video is affiliated with W Energy, which was formulated to give you focus and energy with no jitters or crash. It contains vitamins, amino acids, and nootropics, including the patented Neurofactor. Check out this great boost to help you through any game, any time. Use my partner code JoeBuffaloGaming for 10% off your purchase. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope everybody had a great day. I hope everybody enjoyed how to make an automatic super smelter using furnaces, blast furnaces, and smokers. I hope everybody enjoyed playing a prank on Lockley. I hope everybody enjoyed exploring all of my farms. Go ahead and hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.